Good morning, believers. Good morning, Israel. Sun's cracking through. Good morning, good morning. Nice. It's been raining here. The air is clear. Let's clear the air. <laughs> it's kind of what I did in that last video. I had to, I had to clear the air with um, these eaves. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put one more little emphasis on that. Thanks for being here, believers. Thanks for being here, new subscribers, old subscribers, family, family of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, coming from the Heavenly Father Himself, sent to redeem us through the Holy Spirit. Um. I don't know about some of you, but um, this this might be a message for some of you. Maybe a lot of you not. I don't know. But this love thing, this this commitment thing in Israel, you know, there was a commitment between men and women, and it was more like if a man wants you, that's your clue to. Either run fast before he catches you and fucks you because once he bones you, you're his wife. So, uh, most, most of the tribe would not let a woman get away from a man who married a woman. So, in this culture, in this de devil world, um, Women have been given the ability to do whatever they want to their own destruction. I mean, um, I'm finding out my value now. I, I used to think, you know, I think my biggest problem was is I knew my value. And I figured I could do whatever the fuck I wanted. And in past lives, I did. And it all worked out just fine. Because what I wanted was the right thing thing so in this world a lot of the things I've done people would say that's not the right thing you didn't do right I did what the fuck I wanted I'm a man of the Lord what do you what you gonna tell me what I need to do for my Lord you're gonna tell me who I should be with no so that's where I'm at now I'm like you women You're very fortunate to be able to choose one man that you really like and get to know him and love him and stay by him and show that you have the commitment to, to the man like you have to the Lord. That's how it goes. The Heavenly Father, the Son, the men, the women, the children. That's all I'm going to say. You get it. Either you get it or you don't. I'm not going to... You churchies... You can use that to your best ability. The churches actually are probably better than Israel because the Israelite men still have that mentality that they can they can do whatever they want. But anyway, let's just get into the lesson. Um, so we're talking about Jonah, the prophet Jonah, and one thing GMS has done to me that has kind of destroyed my ability to teach right is I get too caught up in reading the scriptures instead of just saying what it is and and knowing that you know what I'm talking about you you know the story and if you don't know the story you're just gonna have to believe me I'm not going to go into every scripture every time in every situation to explain to you what this means and what that means I don't know about this fucking goatee I might just go, uh, me, Don. Starting to look weird, old man weird. Um, so Jonah, the Lord sent him to Nineveh. Go tell Nineveh they better repent or in 40 days I'm going to destroy them. And Jonah went, I fucking hate those Ninevites. Fuck Nineveh. 
I'll just go the other way, and by the time, by the time everything's said and done, the, the Lord will have destroyed them. He didn't think of the fact that, dude, when the Lord sends you, you better do what He says. And so there's a message right there to people who think that I'm just here so that we can all be friends and kumbaya and I can sing some Bob Marley songs and pretend to be a smarty, a Bible dick. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I don't really have any choice. He set this up. He set this up for me to be able to do this. He made me work, 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 work like Jacob to get Rachel to see if I had the dependability, reliability, insight, and grace to come do this. So here I am. So that being said, Jonah got on the ship to Tarshish, and there's a lot in this story. I could I could talk about jo the book of Jonah pretty much all day because there's I went through it not too long ago and I went damn I understand this book a lot better but anyway so he's on the boat he's going the other way and the Lord starts tossing the sea around and um, the men on the boat were like what is going on what this this storm is not a normal storm who did a curse what's going on so they found Jonah down there on the bottom they said hey dude what are you doing down here sleeping, man? We're getting ready to die. And Jonah's all, my bad. I'm running from, from the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and they went, oh. And so one of the big questions is, did, did the, were the men on the boat heathens? Probably, but they knew of the power of El Shaddai, the terrible, <laughs> the terrible God. And they're like, shit what do we do so they um I forget how it went they cast straws or something like that and they're like this isn't working I forget how it goes I'm not going to go there but anyway they threw him off the boat because they wanted to live Jonah's I'll just throw me off the boat I, I don't I can't take it I'm not going to Nineveh and I'm not doing what the Lord said so he was being disobedient so the fish and see, I need to I need to keep in Jonah because my last name means of the fish, and so <laughs> I'm the I was this prophet that didn't want to do what he was told probably in one of my lives. I don't know if I was Jonah, but I was a stubborn, rebellious Israelite, right? Adonijah didn't want to listen to his daddy, uh, David. <laughs> and turned into a real spoiled prick. But anyway, <clears throat> back to the story. So, gets spit out on the land. He's oh, three days later, three days later, he's in Nineveh. He's right outside Nineveh. And the Lord told him, Now go do what I told you to do, dick. Mark 8 12. Let me read this to you. And this is this is interesting because he was on a boat just before oh they're talking about fishes Ooh. see this is where the Bible gets really interesting so the just before I get to the the verse that we're talking about he's on the boat and it says um, and they had a few small fishes mark 8 7 and he blessed and commanded to set also them before them and they did eat and they were filled and they took up the broken meat that was left in the seven baskets. So this was the, the baskets and the fish thing. And they that had eaten were about 4,000 and he sent them away. So the ones that ate of the fish and the bread, they were sent away into the world because they saw the miracle, right? They saw the miracle. Sent. You guys got it. If anything, you want to get the one word that you want to pay attention to everywhere in the Bible is the word sent. I've gone into this way back. This has been about six months. I was stuck on sent 
because I wanted you to understand scent. So if you haven't been here, you don't need to go back. But if you want to study a major, major word in the Bible, study the word scent. He, he was sent and he sent them away and straight away he entered into a ship with his disciples and they came to parts of Dalmanutha and the Pharisees came forth and began to question him seeking of him a sign from heaven and tempting him verse 12 and he sighed deeply in his spirit and said why does this generation seek a sign verily I say unto you there shall be no sign be given unto this generation that's not the best that's not the best rendition it's in Matthew sorry I don't know why I went to Mark I'm like let's go to Mark and maybe find something new it's not the 1239 it's not the best rendition because it doesn't go into it deep enough so let's go to Matthew same same story different um, different elaboration uh, well, sock you. I have it on the newspaper up here. 12.39, Matthew 12.39. My bad, my bad. Sign of the prophet. A so the sign of the prophet. Matthew 12.39. Actually, I'll start in, yeah, 38. Then certain of the scribes, this is right after the fish thing. Then a certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah was three days in the belly of the whale and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south, we just went into this, Sheba, right? And we're saying how even the heathen, even the heathen queen of, of Ham, Hamites, she was down there in Ethiopia, somewhere down there. She was, no, she was no Shemite. So this is proof right here. We're going back. See, this is keeping the, this is redrawing the map. Was Sheba... Could Sheba have possibly been a, a Shemite? No. She was with these wicked Ninevites. She was a heathen. She was a Gentile. She was a heathen. The queen of the south shall also rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Jesus Christ, Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. So... What are we talking about here? We're talking about what's happening right now. What's the sign of Jonah? The sign of Jonah is even the churches, the Ninevites, Sheba, the reason Jonah didn't want to go there was because he loved Israel. And what happened is the Ninevites repented. So so Jonah went and he said, you guys are done. 40 days, you're done. And the king of Nineveh put out a decree to fast, to put on sackcloth, to not eat. He, I'm not going to go there because I'll just be GMSing it, um, overdoing the scriptures. I'm just telling you what, it, what happened. The main theme is they repented. They heard Jonah. They heard Jonah. Jonah was sent. And the reason the Lord didn't let him get away is because he was sent to tell them the truth. Two-edged sword. <laughs> That's why I do that. True, true. True, true. Either, either side of the sword, it's going to be true. True, true. Um, if you see me do that, that's, that's for me to... Get my old-fashioned groove on. I've been saying that for over 20 years. True, true. Um, and that's why my channel is called Word of Truth. But anyway, so he told them he went. He didn't want to. He, didn't, he wanted them to fail. Why did he want them to fail? 
He wanted him to fail because he loved Israel and he hated these heathen Ninevite bastards. They were Assyrians. And the Assyrians were very viciously brutal. They're the ones that would cut you open to read your bowels. They would they would do sorcery, necromancy, and wizardry and all that by opening up your gut and reading how your bowels fell out of your body. That's that's the type of kid. <laughs> that's like these modern day. I'm not going to say it because a surgeon has helped me, but they love they love cutting bodies open, right? We can fix that. <laughs> But anyway, the back to the story. The the theme is the Lord's gonna make his voice heard. So when it says here, the only sign, the sign that we're seeing now is that even the Gentiles, even the churches, even even these Hamites, Sheba, even Sheba and these voodoo <laughs> spear chuckers, you know. Even they can put down their spears and hear the man of the Lord. Can you imagine that the king of Nineveh went? Why do I get the feeling that we need to do this? Maybe you can tell by by Jonah's passion. You guys are all you're all up in your feelings, JD Nijah. GMS tells me you're all he's all up in his feelings. Look at him. Yeah, this is serious business, dicks. So, the men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Is he talking about himself? Yeah. But is he talking about right now, right here, who's talking to you? He's he's talking to you through me. He's saying, do you understand? Do you understand? Go back to Mark. Or where were we earlier? John. John 8 or whatever. Do you understand? You don't understand because... You don't know the Father, and you won't listen. That's why. You, that's why you you listen to your father, the devil. You don't know the truth. You won't hear the truth. You damn GMS devils. Ugh. So that's that's basically the message. I thought I, I had a, a, an elaboration on it, but that's base. That's that's it in a nutshell. It's like. He's even, and that's where we see that these guys' doctrine is all, it's completely wrong. It's completely wrong. Don't they, have they never read Jonah? I mean, it's all, like I said, the truth will seep out everywhere. The Gentiles, you churchies, if you're here sitting with a, an Israelite prophet, you're so blessed. I'm giving you confirmation through one of his chosen that he's all good. He's great. He's wonderful. He's he's loving. He's merciful. He's Chuck Missler. I was listening to him last night, and he was he was the one that set me off on this on this message. But at the end of the um, the book of the Minor Prophets. He explained everything that Jesus is. He's the, the he's the avenger of blood. He's the, um, uh, it, he had it all written down. He he's the counselor. He's the the first and the last. He's the word of truth. He's he went into two minutes of the beautiful and brutal things that our Savior is. The Avenger of Blood. What was the other one? That that Kinsman Redeemer. 
He redeems his own. He redeems his family. Kinsman Redeemer. And that's and that's where we know when you think of the Kinsman Redeemer, that's that's in Ruth, where Ruth she's a Gentile. GMS. These guys are Ah, oh, they make my head hurt. How many ways that they that the Bible could could straighten them out, but like it says, you're just a generation of vipers. You're just a bunch of dumbass small bus retards, basically. I, I, I hate to be childish, but that's how angry it makes me that they're out here telling people that could be Israel. I don't know who these people are that, that are listening to GMS and believing in these camps anymore. I'm like, who are these knuckleheads? They haven't they haven't looked in the Bible themselves and said so what if where King David is? Who cares where King David is? Really? Really. So when I when I'm here teaching the Bible to you, I'm I'm teaching you from how I see it. And if you've been following me for any length of time, I point out these things over and over again, so um, I just wanted to say something. Oh, uh, one thing that I don't know, and I don't really want to know, I, I I pulled up a, a video about a guy talking about um, the academic side of the Bible. In other words, what what does academia say about this? What does academia say about that? The not so much the um, rabbis, which would be the Kabbalah slash Torah slash um, deeper hidden things. The the uh, what's it called the Rema Rem Remix Rem Ah, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I, we were just going into it yesterday. The hidden things, but they're they're on the they're on the side that's going. Well, this is what we know and what we don't know, and this is this can't be this. And I listened to him talk about who wrote what book and what what time period it was and why this book came before that book and. It's good to know a little bit about that, but when he starts saying things that make you doubt the Bible, and that's where I had to turn it off, I'm like, I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know that. I want to believe in my story. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. So that's the, that's the message is that there's a spiritual way to look at this book and that's kind of that's where I come from I come from the Holy Spirit side I want to know how to know my God I don't care when it was written exactly who wrote it and a lot of a lot of what he was saying makes sense to me but I don't want to know that Solomon didn't write the Proverbs I don't I don't want to know that I, I want to believe that he did I don't want to know that Solomon might not have wrote all of Ecclesiastes. I want to believe he did. And I think that's why studying academically the Bible is, I think that's what happened to my father, my dad. He was a, he was a really smart man. And I think he, he knew he was of God but he found academic reasons not to believe it. He's like, he, he was listening to a guy, he was like that academic, like that academic. Well, shit, that don't make sense. Why did, why did someone from Persia write the book of Song of Solomon? Because Solomon had a Persian scribe. The Persians were really good at writing Aramaic. I mean, I, I'll, I'll jump off and conjecture all kinds of things that may not be true just so that I can believe the story. And so it's been the other one, and then I'll close out. 
Purim or Pur Purim. It's said different ways by different people. The Jews say Purim, Pur Purim. That's the book of Esther. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> There's a guy that rides with his nuts on the metal bar with his arms out. I don't know why he does that. But um, the book of Purim is about Esther and it's about my tribe. And it takes place in Persia. King Asherus. So where I'm going with this is he made it sound like Purim was like, oh yeah, that's where everyone gets drunk and celebrates that the Israelite people killed Haman and 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 turn the tables on him and and it's kind of like a comedy it's it's not to be taken seriously and i'm like what that was my tribe at their best Mordecai and Esther and he's downplaying it and i just said that this isn't for me so what i'm saying here is i'm going to believe my god before i believe a man GMS, you suck. <laughs> JD Nazar, I'll be back. I have one more thing to talk about and then um, I'll talk to you later. I love you, Israel. Love you, believers. Jesus loves you. Peace and grace to all of you.